that what a man looks like? <laughs> uh, Self-improvement is masturbation. No Self-destruction. Yes, self-improvement is masturbation. Despite all of the YouTubers telling you that self-improvement will save your life. I'm sure that you consume self-improvement content and I am also sure that you have a similar story as me. You were at a low point of your life. You were too something. Too skinny, too anxious, too lonely, too degenerate or too lazy. You decided to look for a solution to this particular problem and you found, mostly by chance, about self-improvement. You got too tired of being lazy and got hands down to learn absolutely everything you could. You wanted to improve your physique, your mental health, your social skills, your relationship and your finances, all at once. A new world where everything could be perfect if you did your habits enough times and worked your ass off. It's exhilarating, right? After a few months of meditating, exercising and reading every book you could, you gained confidence. You were unbeatable. You decided to go out of your house to show everyone your new self. And you see that no one noticed. Your friends are the same, girls are ignoring you as always, and you become frustrated because no one is seeing all of the knowledge you have now. Nobody is seeing how high value top 1% you became. So, you go to your house to search for the answers you were missing and try to find more knowledge, more secrets, more, more and more, on a desperate look to finally be complete. But still, little to no improvement. You're just the same with some knowledge that's pushing you to do more and learn more every single minute. All of these fake gurus are insisting you on to buy their new program, which apparently has the things that the one before doesn't, and installing the belief that you will always need more. More knowledge, more work, more secrets, and, as in Fight Club, a new piece of furniture. There is always a new business model, a new workout program, a new book or a new course that you must get to evolve to the next level. They are insisting you to get way more, while in reality, to actually improve, you need way less. Strike balance. I say never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let, let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. Needing way less is what Tyler Durden calls self-destruction. When we embarked on this self-improvement journey, we built our new selves atop old, infected roots. Fight Club reveals destruction in every form, shattering glass, tearing down walls and confronting strangers, all reflections of an internal struggle. Yet, self-destruction isn't solely about physical pain, it's about the mental battle of shedding old skins, old beliefs, old wants. The narrator is left completely zeroed out. His apartment exploded, he's living in a shithole, and he's getting beaten up a couple of times a week. Tyler is pushing him to question every single belief he has. Did he truly need all that furniture? What did he know about himself if he hadn't got into a fight? What's the point of being a slave of the system? The system has always told you that the answers were out there, in the education system, in jobs, in courses. And toxic self-improvers amplify this belief by telling you that you shouldn't trust your brain and that you should look for every single answer in their videos. They are pushing you to look outwards and continue building over shitty roots so you can never change. They told you two uncomfortable things like cold exposure or quitting sodas, when in reality the true uncomfortable thing is to face your own demons and actually take action on the things you learn. To put it in simple words, if you want to grow, a part of you has to die. Of course in a metaphorical way, to actually make progress you don't need a new productivity course or a new habits book. If you have low self-esteem, face that demon and discover why you have this problem. What were the causes? Why did you build this belief? If you're constantly anxious or depressed, what's the true reason for it? Learning to face your demons and thinking your way out of core problems will do much more for you than constantly learning new superficial stuff and trying to know everything. Tyler Durden loves chaos. He thrives in it. He wants it constantly. He sees that what he needs to get to the next level is on the other side of the unknown. As Jordan Peterson says, there is only two real things, what we know and what we don't know. In every bit of chaos, there is the possibility of order, 
and vice versa. Tyler was always changing, evolving and completely detached from external things. He understood that many things were meaningless, but what brought true meaning was living an impact. Of course, you shouldn't desire to leave a bad footprint in the world, that's simply insane. Notice that he doesn't consume lots of things trying to find answers, he just goes with it and takes action. Don't get me wrong, I love books, videos and courses. But there's a certain point where you should consume way less of content and experience life. One of the teachings that people post online will only change your life if you actually apply them and become super intentional with what you consume next. The narrator created this alter ego so that he didn't have to directly face chaos and do the changes he needed by himself. He created this imaginary character who pushed him to every limit he could. But still, the narrator continues to question the acts of Tyler and frequently opposing him. That's why you see little to no growth from the narrator until the end of the movie, when he realizes that he's absolutely insane and that this whole time it was himself. So what's the solution? How can we avoid constantly masturbating ourselves with new information? The answer is not as simple as stop consuming content and take action, it's a little bit more deep. After you consumed a lot of content, you probably feel productive but confused. So many points of view about how to solve the same problem will drive you crazy. The first thing to unlock true growth in your life is to analyze it and see what the hell is wrong. The narrator couldn't sleep because he didn't know why. He found out that by letting his emotions out, he could finally sleep. That's kind of a more superficial conclusion. If you find the roots of your problems and try to analyze them objectively, by the way, you'll need a lot of meditation for this, sooner or later, you'll find the solution. The catch is, this will take time. They tell you, change your life in two weeks. They'll promise it will be easy and fun. Parts of the journey may be, but others will be arduous. Confronting your demons isn't pleasant, nor is the process of pondering, attempting solutions, failing, rising and trying again, but it is worth every fucking moment. You'll craft a life on your own terms, it may not be perfect, but it's yours, and it grants freedom. There will be days of uncertainty, questioning your path, but remember, shit always gets harder before you level up. Tyler endured trials, but he emerged a refined version of himself, or at least a more aligned version with his goals. Uncomfortableness isn't solely a cold shower at 5am. It's about confronting your insecurities, fears and problems. It's having those tough conversations and making those hard decisions. Once you get all of this cleared up, self-improvement becomes much easier. Once you destroy your previous identity, the identity of a loser, of a low self-esteem person, you're more aware of your strengths and weaknesses. You start to build your character in the way you want and live life on your own terms. All of these self-improvement habits will have greater return of investment if you combine them with that true internal work of diving into the unknown and coming out stronger. And all of the self-improvement will make much more sense when you're out there living. Self-improvement is not the goal itself. It is the means to a bigger, more meaningful goal. Life is not about knowing all the answers, it is not about waiting to get everything in place to start that new project or taking that risk. One of the most beautiful things in life is not knowing what's going to happen next, but knowing that you'll be ready for any kind of situation. You're continuously building your body, your mind and your knowledge. To use it, to fucking live man, to live new experiences, to try new things, to fall in love, to get you heartbroken, to build meaningful friendships to try something new and fail horribly, but getting the lessons and moving on. Life is meant to do something about it. Staying in your house on your infinite dopamine detox is this just your comfort zone. Chasing your dreams should be a no-brainer. Knowledge will be useful once you find some bumps in the road and need new answers. But having all of the answers before starting, it's mad stupid. The key to balance consumption and action is being super intentional with what you are consuming. Check the people you follow, the people you admire, the authors you read and the YouTubers you watch. Are they teaching you something that you could apply right now into your life? Or do you want to level up in another area? Analyze your life, see what needs improvement and focus on that. It's stupid to try and become the best in every single area of your life at the same time. It's better to solve one problem at a time. You want to have a better dating life? Focus on that 
a better physique, focus on that. Or making money, focus on that, on one thing. Because it will be easier to sustain the progress long term. Self-improvement is about that internal work. Even though in Fight Club this self-improvement is represented by the narrator's alter ego, it's a lesson that self-improvement is nothing without self-destruction. Letting go of the shit to make some space for you the new stuff. Try this philosophy and we'll talk later.